Uh, welcome to the Enviro House How To. I am Jenny, and today we're going to be talking about remedies for the insects in your garden and your yard. Um, so these are bee-friendly insecticides, or like mold fungicides. Fungicides. Um, so we're just going to start with the basic one, and your this is neem, and neem is going to take care of your aphids your spider mites, your white flies, if you have any mold or mildew, um, it handles the rust really well. Now, neem is like the first go-to for any of those issues. Neem is not gonna take care of the caterpillars, the isopods or the pill bugs, they're really little cute little guys, look like little dinosaurs in the ground. Um, it's not gonna really affect your ants it really handles those smaller, soft-bodied insects. So say you've got broccoli in your yard. Your broccoli is going to eventually get hit with aphids. It's just inevitable. Aphids love it. It's like sweet nectar. So neem should be your first go-to. When you apply it, you're going to apply it either very early in the morning or you're going to apply it at dusk. The reason you're going to do that, especially if it's in, the, in summer, is that the sheen that happens on the leaves, it can be a reflective mechanism and it will burn your leaves. It won't, the product itself won't burn your leaves, but the reflecting light of the sunlight and the heat, it will heat up those leaves and cook your broccoli before it's ready to be harvested. So, when you do apply neem for your aphids and white flies, spider mites, um, any of the mildews, your rusts, um, those, this is going to be applied early morning or at dusk. And it can be applied every other week if it's kind of a mild infestation. Um, or uh, it can be applied every week if you just see, you're like, whoa, the aphids have just exploded in my yard. Okay, so you, you can apply it every single week. You can eat your veggies, even if um, you have a beautiful, uh, a beautiful head of cauliflower and you're like, oh, I sprayed neem yesterday. Uh, don't worry, just wash it off. It's not gonna harm you. It doesn't harm your pets. Um, it's a very mild insecticide and fungicide. Now we're gonna look at the horticultural oil. Horticultural oil is used in many applications. It can be used on fruit trees. It really does help uh, with being proactive on your fruit trees. Um, it does work on those um, soft bodied aphids, white flies, spider mites, those types of things as well. Um, but it doesn't kill them like the neem kills it, okay? What the horticultural oil does is that it suffocates the mechanism. It suffocates whatever is intruding into your, your garden or your fruit tree. And so you would spray this on, and again, you're going to spray it early morning or you're going to spray it at dusk. But know that it's not going to kill anything, but that it's going to trap it and it will suffocate whatever is underneath it. So it's not, um, it's not a killing implement. For, for our little aphid friends, um, but it will suffocate them. It is, is super effective with rusts as well, okay? Then we're gonna get up a little bit. So this is copper soap fungicide. Now the copper soap fungicide is fantastic for rust. It is just wonderful on fruit trees. Your apple trees, cherry trees, um, a lot of times they're gonna get a fungus or they're gonna get a rust. And it's when the leaves start turning this weird orangey brownish color. Sometimes uh, leaf curl really helps with leaf curl. Um, this, it, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is a concentrated version, okay? So you're gonna have to buy a, um, a spray bottle for these, but they do come in the ready to use spray bottles. Now, if you have like a huge area to cover, um, you're gonna be refilling a lot. So my recommendation is, is to get a, a ready to use spray bottle and get the concentrate because then you can just keep filling up that spray bottle. The spray bottle has the label of the product, like in this case, it would be the, the copper soap. And then you know that you don't have to label it. It's already ready for you. And you're just adding that tablespoon to your spray bottle and then adding the water to keep using and reusing. Um, it's a nice way to 
keep using your, your spray bottles and not have to really purchase it again. And you get the longevity of the product. Um, but you'll notice that um, this copper, uh, the copper spray is also really great with tomatoes. So as we start moving into the fall, tomato blight, it's when the leaves turn kind of a black, they kind of curl in and they get black and they get a little wool. Um, this really does help with tomato blight. Sometimes we get it early in the season uh, because maybe we've had too much water or the temperature hasn't been hot enough, but the copper soap really does help with tomato blight as well. It's, it's kind of a nice multi-purpose. Um, it's not gonna do anything for insects or, or um, our little legged, legged pests, but um, it does hit those, those molds and funguses and really get them, get them out of your garden, out of your trees effectively, efficiently, and it is bee safe. So again, like all the rest of these, you're gonna spray it in the morning, very early morning, or you're gonna spray it at dusk. Spinosad. Spinosad is, it's going to be that tool that you're gonna use when your neem or a horticultural oil is just not doing it, okay? You have such an infestation of say aphids or white flies. It's, it's so intense that you, know, you don't wanna rip out any of the plants because you still wanna eat something, but it is, it's just, the, it's too heavy. The pest, the pest uh, level is too heavy. So spinosad would be your next step. Spinosad is gonna get those aphids. Um, it, it can affect ants, um, but again, it's gonna be mostly for those soft body plants. And uh, the leaf miners, ooh, leaf miners are a really good one. So leaf miners will attack your, um, well, your lettuces. It'll attack your uh, leaf miners, will go for your Swiss chard. It'll go for your beet greens, your turnip greens, radish greens. And leaf miners are those little guys, you can't really see them, but in the leaves, they'll make these little trails just between those walls of that leaf. And so they're actually in between those, um, the walls, which is really, it's kind of ingenious really. Um, but this, this will be your next um, move to get the you know the aphids leaf miners and then again those are the the soft bodies those white flies and things if you're having um, the, the the pest uh, level is, is quite high uh, but again this will this will take care of it and spinosad again it's a soap it's a spinosad soap so you're going to want to use it um, apply it early in the morning or apply it at dusk like all the rest of these now let's get into those caterpillars and these you know, Japanese beetles that are super invasive, uh, hard body shell guys. Um, Captain Jacks. Captain Jacks is awesome. So Captain Jacks, it will take care of your cabbage worm. A cabbage worm is so awful, okay? It, you'll, you'll notice that, um, oh my gosh, I've got some leaves in my, in my, uh, my broccoli leaves. Um, because what, what those cabbage worms are from is the cabbage moth but the cabbage moth is actually a butterfly, which is kind of strange. Um, the worms themselves, the caterpillars, they are going to nestle in, say this is your leaf and this is your stem, they're gonna nestle in right in that stem and they're gonna wait until it gets dark or if it's shaded and you won't even notice because it'll look like part of the stem. They're ingenious little guys. And then they'll start coming out and they'll go underneath your leaf and follow the veins of the leaves. So it's just, it hugs those veins. So it's really hard to detect when they're tiny, tiny. I mean, they are just minuscule. Once they get a little bit fatter and you notice that they've been eating, then they become more pronounced and they're kind of a lime green color. Captain Jack's is absolutely the best way to go. Now, um, you are gonna need to apply it every other week if you have a lot of brassicas. You've got um, cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, you are gonna want to apply it every other week because that um, cabbage moth is coming around and laying eggs all of the time and they lay eggs underneath those leaves. So you're gonna have to keep applying it throughout the season if you wanna keep those, um, if, you have, if you see a lot of cabbage moth around your yard, you're going to have the, um, the cabbage Little, little caterpillar guy, little worm, and he's gonna come and he's gonna eat your stuff. So you are absolutely gonna have to do several applications of this. Now, another great thing about this though is that it takes care of um, gypsy moths, all of that larvae. So gypsy moths, um, 
you've got coddling moth, all, all of those little guys that are getting laid by our winged adults, this does it, okay? The hard body, the bigger, the more robust uh, insects and, um, and plant predators. Um, so it's, it's a really nice one. Um, it does do those Japanese beetles a number. So if you see Japanese beetles, they're super invasive. Captain Jack's can do it. But again, you're gonna have to reapply several times. So again, this is a concentrate. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get a spray bottle or you can get a larger concentrate and get one of those Hudson sprayers and you can just get a bigger thing and spray everything. But um, the getting a concentrate and getting the ready to use sprayer, you can keep adding to it. I know I've already gone through about half of mine. Um, apply in the morning, apply also at dusk. Um, but this is a really good one. It's going to affect, affect a broader range of insects and um, garden predators. Oh, and then we have our Triple Action Plus. So if none of these things are working, A, or you have all of these things, like you have, you have leaf miners and you have Japanese beetles and you have aphids and you're looking at your garden and you're going, ah! Okay, Triple Action Plus has all of those things. You have, um, maybe you have rust, you have, you have um, some fungus in there. Um, Triple Action Plus has, is formulated so you can use it. It, it. It's basically, this is combining all of these. The Triple Action Plus combines all of these tools together. So if you have all of the problems <laughs> in your yard, you can use the Triple Action Plus. And again, this is a concentrate. It'll take care of your aphids. It'll, it'll take care of, it's a fungicide, an insecticide. Um, it, it is a miticide. I mean, it, it will absolutely take care of a, a huge array of issues if that's what you're dealing with. And, and some folks who have, um, maybe they're new to their yard, uh, might have a broad range all at the same time because they haven't been able to pinpoint and take control of, of the various um, pests and, and mites and fungicides in their, and fun fungus in their yard. So um, if you're really struggling, then just with all of those things, get the Triple Action Plus, okay? Morning application, dusk application, just like everything else, okay? Now this is, di whoops, this is diatomaceous, sorry. Diatomaceous earth is also called DE. DE is great. Um, it will deter slugs, snails, ants, um, anything, uh, beetles, anything that has a, a harder shell or has a soft exposure. What it does, it's, um, it's like going through glass for these little guys, uh, for the snails. They go on top of it. And what it does is it lacerates their body. So a lot of times this is used for ants, keeping ants at a specific places, because once a few of the ants go over it, that they tell, they tell the nest and they're like, no, 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 don't go there anymore. Cause you know, we've got Joe and he's got a, uh, he's got a, a, a cut on his body, you know, and they, they don't go there anymore. Um, but it really does help with that. Um, it can keep silverfish, uh, fleas, mites. Uh, if you have chickens, diatomaceous earth is also going to be your best friend. It keeps uh, fly, flies down. Um, it's a multi-purpose and, and really what it does is it, it makes cuts on those bodies and then they, um, they end up expiring by uh, dehydration. So you can get little, this, this product has a nice top, you know, and you can trim the top and then you can strategically squirt it everywhere you want. It's a powder. Um, you can get 25 pound bags and uh, you can get it in all different sizes. You can get food grade. Um, if you're using it around a lot of animals. Um, again, it is not going to be harmful to you or your pets. Um, if you inhale it, it, it might irritate you a little bit, you know, but you're not gonna see any damage. You're not gonna see any lasting damage and it, it will take care of the problem. Um, I use diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth in um, my home, actually. I've got little tiny black ants and it uh, keeps them keeps them at bay in certain spots that uh, that really I see them coming in in the spring and then see them trying to find refuge in the fall. So diatomaceous earth is a really easy one. And you don't need a lot. Sluggo. Sluggo is, it, it's kind of a pasta base. I mean, dogs can eat it. We, we could eat it. Don't eat it. Please don't eat it. Um, but it does, it takes care of your slugs and your snails and they eat it, it expands in their digestive system, and then they expire. 
Um, it, we have another product as well that is out there. It's called uh, Sluggo Plus, and that gets the isopods, the pill bugs. It gets a few other things. Um, but Sluggo is, is an Omri certified product. And that means it, it is used on uh, organic farming. They can use this. It is uh, USDA organic certified um, stuff. So uh, Sluggo is super effective. You sprinkle it around the edge of your area, edge of your garden, um, and it will, they will rid you of a slug and snail problem. Um, very easy. You don't need a whole lot. They're little pellets. So you don't need a whole lot. You might have to reapply if we get several days in a row of rain. Um, and that's also with the diatomaceous earth, the DE. Um, you might have to reapply if we get several days of rain after you've applied, you know, put down an application, just because it, it will kind of wash away. These are pellets, though, so it's it, the likelihood of them washing away is really low. Uh, but they might get mushy and turn to kind of like an oatmeal instead of being a nice solid pellet that looks more um, enticing to the slug and the snail. We have uh, deer. And rabbits, uh, deer here in our area, deer are a problem. Rabbits, mm, not so much, but this will deter both. So this is a wonderful deer and rabbit repellent. Um, it does not hurt them in any fashion, um, but it's a liquid fence. And what you do is you put it around the perimeter of the space that you're trying to protect. You're probably early in the season gonna have to do it a couple of times, you know, do it one week, do it again another week, do it again a third week, and then you'll be able to take a small break and uh, you'll probably have to do another two or three applications um, throughout the summer to protect your area. But um, we found that customers really like this and it is effective they come and they get the giant containers of it <laughs> uh, they love it they love this stuff um, but again when you're starting out you do have to do several applications then you can break and then do another application and then come back and do maybe another one or two as we get late in, in uh, the summer and early fall um, super effective um, again this comes in a concentrate uh, so you could put it in a Hudson sprayer or uh, there is also a very large container that has a ready-to-use uh, sprayer for perimeter if you have a larger area to do if you have fruit trees, um, I did not bring the maggot traps, um, but the coddling moth is another one. The coddling moth um, is gonna go for all of your fruit and berries, um, mostly your apples and your pears. Um, these are our nice little traps inside here, and they look like little tents. So these tents are very sticky, and um, you just, you pop them up. It has a pull here. And then you just set it into your tree. It has a little hole, and it does have some attachments. You can attach it to your tree. Um, this one is actually kind of cool because it tells you um, what the moth will look like. This is a coddling moth. This is a clothes moth, Indian meal moth, and a Mediterranean flower moth. What we're really looking for is that coddling moth. And inside is very, very sticky. There's also a pheromone inside and it traps them in there. What's also really cool about this is there's a grid inside. So if you wanted to open it up and do a count of how many coddling moth you're finding um, on your fruit trees, you could do that and you could inspect and you could write the date that you looked at it and come back and look at it again. Um, most of these packages come with two um, and there's a pheromone and there's some attachments, um, but it's, it's kind of a neat way to have some science going on in your yard uh, as well as, as keeping that coddling moth at bay. This is an aphid and white fly trap. Aphids and white flies are white flies. You're going to find them inside your home and house plants. A lot of times um, you'll see little tiny guys flying around, um, but aphids and white flies, they absolutely love to sit in the um, the Swiss chard. They will hang out in all of your brassicas. Again, the brassica family is going to be your broccoli, your cauliflowers, your kales, your uh, Brussels sprouts, all of those. And they just hang out. And you'll notice if you brush your plants, you'll see little white flies, little white flying objects coming out. Those are white flies. Um, and white flies and aphids, they really team up. They really like to hang out together. So these are just little traps. There are holes here and they punch out just like that. If I peel this off, it will be exceptional. I'm only going to peel off just a little bit, but it is very sticky. So you peel this off and it creates a nice grid. Again, if you're feeling 
uh, like a home scientist, you could absolutely find out how many white flies you have in your whatever location you're doing um, and how many aphids you have in your location by counting out that grid. Um, but this is a very, very, very sticky. And it does, each kit, each kit comes with several, okay? So you're gonna have multiple opportunities. If you have a small space, maybe you only use one, but you can, you've got three more to use over the season. You've got lots of spaces, you've got several places to put it. And um, what I like to do, uh, this, this doesn't come with uh, the posts or sticks. I like to use popsicle sticks or use um, takeout um, chopsticks. And I stick them through the holes because it has three holes here. And I stick it through the holes and it looks like a little yellow flag sitting in the garden, okay? So you can stick the, the takeout uh, chopstick in there and do that. Or you can tape, tape a popsicle stick. Or even those uh, skinny bamboo sticks it works really, really well. Okay, that's for white fly and aphid traps. And, that, you know, and that's if you're feeling a little unsure about any of using a spray or a liquid, um, liquid deterrent. deterrent. Well, that's about all I have for pests and how to keep them at bay in your garden. Um, thank you for watching the Envire House how-to video. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments box. Give us a like and hope you see you again.